Hi, how are you? My name is Robert and, from now on I thank you for watching this video, in which I am going to show you how to properly configure the Power Quality Analyzer Fluke 435 Series 2 using the setup key. But before continuing, I would like to ask you not to forget to drop a like if you find this video interesting, in that way, I will program new videos on this topic. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. In my previous video about the Power Quality Analyzer Fluke 435 Series 2 we reviewed all the measurement functions that the analyzer provides through the menu key, so by now you will have noticed that this analyzer is very powerful and versatile. But before we get down to work and install the equipment in an electrical panel, we have to see how to properly configure the analyzer. It is time to see the setup key that you can find on the right side of the instrument. If you press this key, the summary screen of the instrument configuration will appear. In the blue options bar, on F4, there is the manual setup option, which will allow us to change and configure the parameters to make a correct registration. Once pressed, the currently selected power grid topology will be highlighted. But before changing it, I suggest that with the up arrow key you go up two positions, to set the date correctly. Once you are on the date indication, press the enter key located at the bottom of the instrument. Now you can adjust the year, month, day and date format. To do this, scroll vertically with the up and down arrows and change the value with the left and right arrows. For the date format, go to the one you like the most and hit enter. If you have connected the GPS option to the device, you can activate the time synchronization with the F2 key, in this way the device will update its date and time automatically with the time signal available through the GPS. Now with F3 you can go on to adjust the time. Press F3 and you can set the hour, minutes, seconds and time zone. As you can see now, the option to modify the date appears on F3. Once the appropriate changes have been made, we select F5 back. It may seem silly, but it is very important to set the date and time correctly, especially if we need to present a report later. Now, we can go on to configure the topology of the electrical system in which we are going to install the analyzer to measure and record data. Press the Enter key once the Config option is highlighted, and a screen will open with a series of figures representing different electrical systems. The F1, F2 and F3 keys will allow us to navigate between three different pages. In group 1, we probably have the most common systems, such as the single phase system, the split phase system, the three phase star system with grounded neutral and the delta system. The choice between star or triangle, for example, may depend on the presence or not of the neutral. Let's choose for example the triangle configuration and press enter. Now we are presented with the connection diagram of the voltage cables and the current probes, which is a good help to avoid making mistakes. We press F5, back, twice and the triangle system called 3, 0, delta appears selected. Now we press the down arrow key to modify the frequency and press enter. As we can see, in this unit we can see three frequencies, 50, 60, and 400 hertz because this unit really is a 437. As I said in my previous video, the 437 analyzer is a bit special since it adds the function shipboard, volts, amps, HERZS, that allows us to measure in networks at 400 Hz. In my case I select 50 Hz. Now we go down with the down arrow key to the option VNOM, to set the nominal voltage, and press enter. By default the voltage of 398 volts appears selected in the right column, but we can change it if we wish. Keep in mind that in this case, the value to be selected is the one corresponding to the nominal voltage between phases. If the values that appear do not match the nominal voltage of your network, then you can manually adjust it by moving down to the last position marked custom. In my case I leave it at 398 volts and press the F5 back key. But now I want to show you something very important. What nominal voltage value do we have to enter if we choose a star system? Let's try. We press the enter key again and choose with the left arrow the system 3 to 0 WYE, which is the name given to a star system with a neutral grounded, and then we press the enter key. Now we see that we have to install the neutral current probe, which was not the case in the delta system. We press the F5 back key twice. As we can see the nominal voltage has changed, it is no longer 398 volts and if we press the enter key on that value, we will see that now the value of 230 volts has been selected in the left column. 
This is normal, as in a star system the nominal voltage is taken between phase and neutral, not between phase and phase. This is very important because if we put a value of 400 volts, when measuring a real value of 230 volts between phase and neutral, the unit will think that a voltage drop is permanently occurring. Therefore, in summary, in a delta configuration we need to provide the voltage value between phase and phase, and in a star configuration, we need to provide the voltage value between phase and neutral. Now that we have correctly configured the value of the nominal voltage, it is time to configure the standard that we are going to use for our power quality analyzer. Press the down arrow to the option called limits, and press the enter key. By default, the limits established by the European standard EN 5160 for power quality limits will appear. We can review and edit these limits, although, probably, this will be part of a new video. If we now press the F1 key, recall, we can see the different standards that we can choose from. In this case, the EN5160 standard appears, applicable in many countries both inside and outside Europe, and the GOST 32-144 standard, applicable for example in Russia. In my case, I select the EN5160 standard, press the Enter key, and the Back key twice to exit to the main configuration menu. In this way, the analyzer will automatically apply all the limits of the EN5160 standard for the analysis of the power quality. We have almost finished the configuration of the power quality analyzer, but we still have a very important step, the configuration of the current and voltage probes. To do this, press the down arrow until the table that appears at the bottom is highlighted, once it is highlighted, press the enter key. By default, the current probe configuration page appears. For phases 1, 2 and 3, the unit uses the same configuration, but for neutral the unit allows us to select, if desired, a different type of current probe. We can switch between phases and neutral with the F4 key. The first parameter that appears is the probe model that we are going to use. If the standard flexible probes supplied with the unit are used, this model is indicated as I430TF. But if another probe is used, we can change this parameter with the left and right arrows. You can, for example, choose a probe with a given millivolt per ampere output, for example 10 millivolts per ampere. In this case, precisely in the next parameter called clamp range, this value of millivolts per ampere will appear. In the case of using a special probe, the unit also allows to manually define the output of that probe, in this case we choose custom in the probe type, and now we can manually change the millivolts per ampere according to the technical specification of that probe. In my case, I select the I430TF probe and since it is a flexible probe self-powered by the unit itself, in the clamp range option, auto appears, a parameter that in this case we cannot change. You can also see a probe called I430 flex, but this probe was the probe included with the obsolete 435 series 1, so it should not be selected. Once the probe is properly selected, as I say, in my case the I430TF, we go down to the parameter called nominal range. This value is used to scale the graphs on the instrument display, so the logical thing is to choose a value slightly above the maximum value that we intend to measure. The next parameter, called sensitivity, is very important. With the standard flexible I430TF probes, it is possible to measure up to 6000 amps. The unit, actually, has two ranges, a range that goes from 0.5 amps to 600 amps and another range that goes from 5 amps to 6000 amps. As in any instrument, the smaller the range, the better the resolution, so if we are sure that we are going to measure currents below 600 amps, we can leave the sensitivity at 10 times to measure small currents with the best resolution. If we are not sure or if we know that the currents are greater than 600 amps, then, we must set the sensitivity at times 1. In case we leave the sensitivity at times 10 and the current is greater than 600 amps, the input amplifiers will saturate and in the register we will have the OL indication of overload. Finally, with the down arrow key we select the ratio option. Once this option is selected, with the right and left arrows we can move through several options, in order to select the transformation ratio in the case that current measurement transformers are used in medium and high voltage systems, as normally happens, for example, in electrical substations. In this way, the unit will apply this transformation ratio to measured low voltage current at the output of the current measurement transformer, in order to calculate and display medium and high voltage current values. 
In this way, we have already configured the current probes for the three phases. All this process is equally applicable, but separately, to the configuration of the neutral current probe. By pressing the F4 key, we change to the right column and we can make the settings for the neutral current probe. Once the current probes have been configured, by pressing the F3 key we can also configure the ratio for the voltage measurement transformers if we are in a medium or high voltage installation. Again with F4 we can separately configure the phase voltages and the voltage between neutral and earth. Both, voltage and current ratios, should be set to a 1 to 1 ratio if working in a low voltage installation. Finally, by pressing the F5 back key, we return to the main settings menu, but now, our analyzer will be properly configured for the electrical system in which we are going to perform the measurements. And so we have reached the end of this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said at the beginning, I would like to ask you not to forget to drop a like if you have found this video interesting, in that way, I will program new videos on this topic. In the next video I will also talk about something very important such as the installation of the instrument and how to verify that it is correctly installed. So if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. Likewise, I would like you to send me your suggestions for new videos. Thank you very much for watching this video, see you soon.